In any fortress worthy of its name, there are troops who guard enemy entry points day and night, and they're ready to react in case of an attack, waiting to alert and awaken the entire army. In humans, these control elements travel in the blood and body fluids, which are the pathways by which pathogens can spread rapidly throughout the body, and where particularly effective control is therefore needed. The complement system is one of the most immediate systems that acts to this effect once the anatomical barriers have been overcome. This is a group of about 30 proteins produced mainly by the liver and circulating in an inactive form. As a result of certain stimuli, these proteins are activated mainly by cleavage and the release of active subunits. The very name of the complement system has a rather evocative meaning. This system complements and supports the action of other elements of the immune system. Indeed, can have a more or less direct effect on both innate and adaptive immunity. One, it helps antibodies to opsonize pathogens so that they can be easily removed by phagocytes. Secondly, complement proteins can bind receptors on B cells, thereby inducing their antibody production. The elements of the complement system have a very simple nomenclature which can be summarized into a few key points. 1. Each element is indicated by the letter C, followed by number, which, however, does not indicate the order in which the elements are activated in the cascade, but the order in which they were discovered. 2. When indicating the active subunits of the cleaved complement proteins, the suffix B is used for the larger subunit, A, for the smaller ones. The only exception is the C2A fragment, larger than C2B, again for reasons related to its discovery. Some more recently discovered elements are not indicated with the C. This is the case with B, H, or I factor. In the complement system, as with other cascade system in our body, like coagulation system, kinin system, etc., there are both activation and effector pathways. There are three activation pathways and, as it is often the case in immunology, they are independent. The lactin pathway, the classical pathway, and the alternative pathway. The lactin pathway exploits molecular sensors for pathogens of a lactin nature, such as containing carbohydrate-binding domain. The classical pathway, which is so-called because it was discovered first, starts with a C1 component, a sensor for some bacterial components. The alternative pathway, on the other hand, is so-called because it is capable of being constantly and autonomously active at low levels and then be fully activated when needed. The effector pathways, on the other hand, are also common to other innate immunity systems and lead to the activation of inflammation, phagocytosis, and membrane attack. At the center of the system, acting as a conjunction between activation and effector pathways, lies the formation of C3 convertase, an enzyme capable of cleaving the C3 protein into the C3A and C3B fragments. C3B, as we'll see later, triggers a whole other series of mechanisms which are responsible for the final effect. Bearing this general pattern in mind, let's now analyze in greater detail all the possible activation pathways of the complement system. So, the activation lactin pathway. Lactin pathway receptors. The lactin pathway has four different PRRs circulating in the blood MBLS, 
mannose binding lactins, L vicolins, H vicolins, and M vicolins. MBLS are synthesized in the liver and are oligomeric proteins. That is to say, they are made up of a single repeating monomer. Collectin is an MBL monomer. This is a molecule that contains an amino terminal domain of collagen like nature, hence the suffix col. In a C type carboxy terminal lectin domain, meaning it requires calcium to recognize carbohydrate structures. Specifically, MBLS are able to recognize mannose, fucose, and N acetyl glucosamine, which are three carbohydrates that form various microbial surfaces, gram minus, gram plus, bacteria, yeast, etc. However, MBLS are unable to recognize celiac acid, a carbohydrate typically expressed on vertebrate cells. This characteristic prevents activation of the lactin pathway against cell cells in the body. But how do the individual monomers aggregate with each other? Well, through their collagen-like domains, the coil to form a triple helix, three monomers can form a single trimeric structure. Several trimers then combine to form the final macromolecule by means of disulfide bonds between domains rich in cysteine, an amino acid containing sulfur. Since the glycan walls of microbes are formed by monosaccharides repeating many times throughout the bacterial surface, the multimeric structure of MBLs allows several of these sugars to bind. Thus, even if a single MBL monomer has a low affinity for the binding sugar, the total avidity of binding capacity of the molecule is extremely high. You know what they say, their strength in numbers. MBLs circulate at low levels in the blood of healthy individuals. Their concentration can, however, increase dramatically following an infectious process due to a response triggered by the liver, the acute phase response. Ficolins are conceptually similar in structure to MBLS, but monomer of the ficolins has instead of a lactin-like domain, a fibrinogen-like domain, hence the suffix phi, also linked to a collagen-like domain, or suffix call. They do, however, have a lactin activity, as they bind bacterial carbohydrates, and they are therefore considered activators of the lactin pathway. There are three types, L and H, which are synthesized in the liver and circulate in the blood, and M, which is synthesized and secreted by cells in the lung and blood. L and M phycolins mainly recognize acetylated sugars, which are abundant in lipodechoic acid, a component of the bacterial wall of gram plus bacteria. H phycolins, on the other hand, have a narrower specificity for defucose and galactose, and the only bacterium towards which they have shown activity is Aerococcus viridans, a bacterium causing infective endocarditis. So, we have now learned the elements recognized by the lactin pathway and what these recognize. But how does the complement activate once the recognition has taken place? Well, to understand this, we gotta take a look at MASB proteins, MBL-associated serine proteases which are enzymes associated with both MBLS and phycolins. As a result of the binding of sensors to bacterial structures and the resulting conformational change, they are able to perform actions that can lead to the complement activation. To be specific, the conformational change affects MASP1, which cleaves and activates MASP2. Once the MASP2 is activated, it can cleave C4 and C2, thereby activating them. Once the C4 is cleaved, it creates the two fragments, 
known as C4A and C4B. C4B, as well as C3B, contains a TED theoaster domain, that is to say, a theoaster domain capable of valently binding to bacterial surfaces. C4B on the bacterial surface can thereby bind C2A and form C4B2A, the C3 convertase of the classical and lactin pathway, which underlies the vector mechanism. Well, there is a fundamental point here that must be clarified. In order for C4B to bind C2 and cleave it, it is imperative that it binds to a bacterial surface. Otherwise, the thioesteric group of C4B is rapidly hydrolyzed and irreversibly inactivated. Well, this mechanism has two fundamental implications. One, the complement is activated in a localized manner on the pathogens to be targeted. Its uncontrolled activation will lead to considerable damage to the organism, with a strong disproportion in the risk-benefit ratio. Two, the complement is rapidly stopped if there is no infection in progress. So, we've seen how the lactin pathway leads to the formation of C3 convertase. Instead, let's now see how the classical complement pathway, well, so called because it was discovered first, operates. We can study it in terms of its difference from the lactin pathway. Also in this case, there is a PAMPS recognition molecule represented by the C1 complex, which consists of three subunits, C1Q, C1R, and C1S, unlike the other complement elements. Well, C1Q plays the role of sensor and is also a trimer hexamer, in which each monomer consists of a globular amino terminal domain and a carboxy terminal collagen like domain. Again, the collagen like domains interact with each other and lead to the formation of a globular head. C1R and C1S, on the other hand, are the equivalent of MASP1 and MASP2, with which they also show structural affinities, especially with MASP2. But what does C1Q recognize? Well, this is a more complex question than the previous one. First of all, C1Q is able to bind certain BAMPS and in particular specific polyanionic, that is to say negatively charged, complex structures of gram plus bacteria, such as lipotechoic acid. However, contact between C1Q and pathogens can occur indirectly, that is to say, through the interposition of other molecules. For example, C1Q can bind PCR, C-reactive protein, an acute phase protein that can, in turn, bind pneumococcal polysaccharide C, hence the name. But above all, C1Q can bind FC fragment of antibodies, in particular IgM antibodies, a type of antibody produced physiologically by our body and fundamental in the removal of pathogens. But whatever the recognition mechanism, when the six globular heads of C1Q recognize pathogen components, the resulting conformational change leads to the auto catalytic activity of C1R, which in turn cleaves C1S, a serine protease, that is to say, an enzyme capable of breaking peptide bonds a serine amino acid residues. C1S then acts on C4, and this is where the lactin pathway comes into play. The formation of C4B and its adhesion to the bacterial surface, the cleavage of C2 into its subunits. For this to occur, C4 must be bound to C1S. The merging of C4 with C2A on the pathogen's membrane, C4B2A, and the formation of the same C3 convertase as a lactin pathway. 
often simply called the classical pathway because it was discovered earlier. Activation Alternative Pathway The last pathway we are going to examine is the alternative pathway, which is actually the oldest and, unlike the others, has no recognition mechanism. Its function, in fact, is to provide continuous subliminal complement activation, which can then become fully effective in the event of the presence of pathogens that have not yet been recognized any other way. It's C3 convertase, known as the alternative pathway C3 convertase, consists of C3B conjugated to the BB fragment of factor B, a plasma protein. The advantage of this system is clear. As soon as there is C3B in circulation, regardless of which pathway has generated it, the C3 convertase of the alternative pathway is able to amplify the signal. But how is the alternative pathway activated in detail? Well, there are two ways. In the first case, C3B generated in some other way binds to the surface of pathogens and binds plasma factor B, thereby altering its conformation. As a result of this conformational change, factor B exposes a binding site for factor D, which cleaves it into BA, released into the circulation, and BB, which remains bound to C3B, thereby forming C3 convertase. Instead, in the second case, C3 undergoes an autonomous hydrolysis or takeover with the formation of C3H2O, which can always be found at low levels in the blood. C3H2O can bind factor B even in the absence of a bacterial surface and can foster its cleavage by factor D with the formation of C3. H2O, double B. This is the fluid phase C3 convertase, a system that is always alert and capable of producing small amounts of C3B that are largely inactivated, but which would bind a pathogen present in body fluids if needed. In conclusion, the classical pathway, the lactin pathway, and the alternative pathway are the three ways in which the complement system can be activated and lead to the production of C3 convertases, essential hubs for the implementation of effector mechanisms. These are very effective pathways, which provide initial protection against a wide range of pathogens, while waiting for other innate and adaptive immune mechanisms to come into play. All this without causing any harm to our organism. Have you ever seen such good snipers? Thank you for watching. This video was created by School of Biomedical Sciences Agora. We hope you enjoyed it. If you're curious or have any doubt or question, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you want to find out more about us or want to support our project, click on the following link to visit our website.